In the northern highlands of Arizona, in a place called Diablo Canyon, there's a small cave system that was used as a hideout for some Apache Indians. During this time, Indian tribes were in control of these lands and tribal warfare was commonplace. In the late 1800s, fights over territory between the Apache and Navajo were raging in this area of Arizona. Apache warriors raided a Navajo camp, killing everyone but three girls that they had taken hostage. When the Navajo warriors caught up to them, revenge had to be dished out. This is the story of the last stand taken by 42 Apache warriors in what is now known as the Apache Death Cave. Join me as we enter the cave and take a look into the past. So here we go, down the Apache Death Caves. In 1878, a group of Apache raiders attacked a Navajo camp and absolutely overpowered the unsuspecting Navajos in the ambush. Every Navajo except for three girls were slaughtered, and their horses and valuables were looted. These three unfortunate girls were essentially taken hostage by the Apache raiders. The Navajo leaders sent out 25 of their best scouts to track down the murderous Apache raiders. While tracking the Apache raiders, the Navajo men lost their trail and the search came up empty. Meanwhile, these Navajo scouts got word that another Navajo camp was attacked, which meant that the Apache raiders were still close by. While searching the area near the Diablo Canyon, the Navajo scouts could smell the Apache's small campfire smoke coming up from a crack in the ground. They had located the hideout of the Apache raiding party. Once the Navajo scouts returned to the elders with the information that they had discovered the location of the Apache raiding party, a massive legion of pissed off Navajo men went to that location. The two Apache men keeping guard at the mouth of the cave were dispatched presumably by arrows to keep the noise down and not alert the raiding party inside the cave. The Navajo men gathered up all the flammable material in the area and set it at the mouth of the cave and then lit it up. As smoke billowed into the cave, the Apaches knew the jig was up. After using all their water to try and extinguish the blaze, the Apache men resorted to killing their horses to use the blood in a futile attempt to put the fire out. When that failed, the Apaches stacked the bodies of the horses in the entrance to try and slow the progression of the smoke. One of the Apache men escaped the flaming horse corpse barrier to try and bargain with the Navajo for their lives. As was tradition, mercy could be gained by a large enough payment from the Apache to the Navajo. Once an agreement was reached, things were looking up for the Apache men, but that didn't last long. A Navajo man asked about the abducted girls. The Apache that they were dealing with indirectly told the Navajo men that the girls had been killed, and now the Apache raiders were screwed. Their fate was sealed. The Apache man that was dealing with the Navajos was instantly shot repeatedly and died right there. The enraged Navajos stacked more fuel in the fire and shot their guns into any opening they could find. The Apache raiders were singing what is known as a death song, and after a while, everything fell silent.
After the fire burned itself out, the Navajo went in the cave to finish off any survivors. Aside from the charred horse corpses, 42 dead Apache were found inside. All the valuables were stripped off the corpses, and the other loot was returned to the Navajos. Legend says that the Apache absolutely refused to use this cave and that the Apache never raided the Navajo after this event. Pioneers to this area were warned that the land was cursed and full of ghosts, but many dismissed these claims as simple stories. However, the pioneers later confirmed these stories after hearing disembodied voices, disembodied screams, and hearing footsteps with no visible source to the noise. And now you've gotten to see what the Apache Death Cave looks like inside as of January 2020. Well, that was pretty fucking cool. Definitely got tight. But it's bigger than I was expecting. It's really deep. It's well worth it. That other path that I couldn't really fit through, that must be where it comes out. It's right the same direction. Another old house. The walls of the house behind me and this house right here are literally done up the same way that the internal walls in the cave were. That shit was wild. That was too fucking cool. That was that was the perfect end to this little road trip. I, I was about to be pretty bummed if once I finally got all the way out here. Cause two guns, not so much the coolest abandoned thing I've seen. Some of those other abandoned things I checked out first. Definitely cooler than two guns. But dude, this cave system was nuts. And the thing that I thought was the most wild about it is there's no graffiti down there. There's like one thing written. Other than that, there's just footprints. There's no graffiti. People aren't knocking shit down. Dude, fucking amazing. Like that's how this stuff should be. Like no tolerance for people tagging, breaking shit when they go, you know, urban exploring or whatever. No tolerance for it. And the fact that that was pretty much pristine and you can still see like rooms where people were probably walled up in oh that shit was so cool so cool oh, thanks for watching everybody i'll catch you guys next time i'm glad that was a, an awesome one see you guys